The Queensland state election has finally been confirmed after months of uh, speculation. Anastasia Palaszczuk, last uh, su uh, Sunday, she visited the acting governor, I believe. She told us that she only intended to visit her nana that Sunday, but apparently she made a stop to uh, Government House as well to call uh, the election for Saturday the 25th of November. So it's happening relatively quickly. And it's going to be a three-way race between uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk's Labor government, the uh, Liberal National Party opposition, which Liberals and Nationals are one party in Queensland, uh, under their leader Tim Nichols, and also uh, with uh, One Nation, which is uh, polling roughly uh, 15 to 20 per cent of the primary vote. Now, uh, Queensland only has uh, one House of Parliament. Uh, they don't have an upper house which is elected by proportional representation, but um, One Nation, because they are polling uh, so highly, they, they could win the, the balance of power uh, post-election. Now, both uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk and Tim Nichols are trying to uh, ignore the uh, the One Nation factor. They're saying, you know, we're going for, you know, majority government, you know, we're not going to, they've ruled out any post-election deals or, you know, preference deals, which is, of course, is uh, very easy to do when you're in, a, in an election campaign, but post-election, you can you know, probably guarantee that, um, or the Liberal National Party, at least, would, would, would do a deal to uh, secure One Nation support. Yeah, and well, I don't really trust polling too much. We've seen Brexit, uh, we've seen Trump, uh, and you know, according to a few articles that I read this morning, uh, the whole same-sex marriage polling could be wrong, and there's been a few people tipping a no win. So I, I don't go by the polling, I generally go by the betting market, because where people are putting their money, I reckon that's where things are happening. now. Uh, the Liberal uh, National Party minority is at 260 and the uh, Labor uh, Party majority is at 230. So that's just showing how tight it is here. So the Liberal uh, National Party will be reliant on one nation uh, and it, I think it is at a toss of the coin whether it's going to be uh, a one nation holding the balance of power or whether um, Anastasia will hold on uh, with her um, Labor Party. So it is quite close, and I think that uh, the One Nation X Factor is quite interesting here in Queensland, uh, and they'll definitely have a big part to play uh, in the rural kind of blue-collar uh, areas that were traditionally Labor, but the Labor Party have left behind the miners, uh, the forestry workers, and they're all turning to... Uh, one Nation. So um, it will be uh, quite interesting. Obviously places like Ipswich where Paul and Hanson won, that, that, they're the kind of places I'm talking about there, but certainly there, there is a very, very good chance that One Nation will be forming, uh, will have the balance of power uh, in the uh, Queensland uh, uh, Legislative uh, Assembly. Now, unic unicameral system as well, there's there's no legislative council or upper house. Uh, so if you hold a majority uh, in the uh, legislative assembly, uh, then you can pretty much get anything you want done. So this is a very, very important election for the state of Queensland. And uh, Malcolm Roberts is going to be the One Nation candidate for Ipswich, so that, that'll certainly uh, give them a, a good chance of uh, polling well in, in that area. Uh, now, a Anastasia Palaszczuk, she, she's been an okay Premier, just uh, I'm looking at things objectively. I mean, you know, she has you know, good uh, approval ratings, even though she has grown the size of the, the public service, she's still uh, committed to a 50% renewable energy target, though she's not uh, pleasing all the Greenies because uh, she's still helping to facilitate the Adani coal mine and uh, protesters against it keep following her on the, the campaign trail and she's 
she, in the campaign, she's very she she wants to remind voters as much as possible of Tim Nichols' link to uh, former Premier Campbell Newman, which uh, the the Newman government in 2012 they were elected with a thumping majority. They won 78 seats out of uh, out of 89. Uh, many expected they'd be in power for uh, two, three terms. Labor were reduced to you know seven seats. Anastasia Palaszczuk only got the opposition leader's job because uh, she was the only one left. But uh, Campbell Newman, because he had a really <laughs> aggressive uh, you know style, you know picked fights where with everybody. There was the the bikey laws, which you know really um, you know scared people. He was. Turfed out after after one term, lost he, lost his own seat, and uh, Palaszczuk was able to bring Labor uh, back from the brink. So she has proven herself a very uh, capable politician, and I do think that uh, I tend to agree with your analysis. It's either going to be her winning a a slim majority, or it's going to be a hung parliament with uh, one nation uh, holding the the balance of power. Now, Tim Nichols, he's uh, he was the treasurer in the in the Newman government. Uh, he's he doesn't fill me with uh, you know much inspiration. He's trying to play it very safe, saying we've learnt the lessons of the you know Campbell Newman years. You know we're going to. Uh, he's focusing on nice things like you know sporting small business, you know, investing in, you know, education and infrastructure, uh, uh, small small target uh, strategy, which is, uh, it doesn't really give people much of a reason to, to vote for them as an alternative. Well, uh, it appears that uh, we are seeing a trend uh, towards uh, the Liberal Party becoming more labour light, also a nationwide trend of uh, probably since the days of Rudd Gillard, hung parliaments, um, you know, one house controlling the upper house, well, well, sorry, one party controlling the upper house, one party controlling the lower house, uh, no stability, um, no strong, go uh, no strong uh, government at all. But I think that uh, it could either be very, very smart, what, the Liberal Party are doing a very stupid because they might be playing it a bit too safe. Um, obviously, uh, they walk a fine line uh, because they are trying to bury the memory of the past of, of Campbell Campbell Newman, you know, a man who looked up to Sir Joe Bielke Peterson, uh, a, a man who was respected by the uh, Bielke Peterson family as well. So they're trying to do away with the the view of you know Campbell Newman the the tough and assertive leader and they just want the the blue blue tie wearing uh, family values small business uh, let's invest in, you know the typical platitudes uh, the nothing happening message um, or they they can vote for uh, Palaszczuk and Jim yeah, she she'll uh, you know, keep selling off assets to uh, keep fun uh, funding a broken system, uh, but she'll allow some development as well. So she's not completely re regressive. So it is an interesting um, uh, case of events, or it's an interesting conundrum uh, here in Queensland, and certainly we'll be keeping a close eye on it as well. Uh, it's, it seems to be that the LNP, they've learnt the wrong lesson from the, the Campbell Newman years because I don't believe it was the, you know, the budget repair which the, the state um, desperately needs. I mean, I think state debt is now uh, $80 billion. I mean, a budget repair has just gone out the window the past three years. The LNP seem to believe that they lost the last election because of budget cuts when, in my opinion, it was the, the bikey laws which, you know, really uh, scared, you know, the public because, you know, they were drafted in such a way where the government could declare, um, you know, a, a meeting of two people to be a criminal organisation and, and charge them. It was, it was really dr uh, draconian uh, laws. And then there was uh, f other ridiculous parts of it, like putting bikies in pink jumpsuits, like just over the top silly stuff like that. <laughs> I, I kind of like it and I think um, Campbell Newman's ideas would have uh, worked very well in a place like Singapore but unfortunately they don't work very well in a liberal democratic society like Australia. 
uh, it is rather hard to uh, force uh, fully grown uh, middle-aged adult men on motorcycles to wear pink jumpsuits. Now, the idea was interesting. Uh, he was clearly a man who rubbed people up the wrong way, and the Liberal National Party have got to be really careful. They they can't be labour light. You know, they can't um, cattle to um, union uh, pressures or or the social progressive kind of Adani, uh, you know, nut movement. Uh, they need to stay true to their key message of small government, uh, you know, lo low taxes, uh, controlling uh, budget, uh, running it in. Uh, they just need to uh, keep true to what the Liberal uh, national cause uh, is known for. And they need to realise that the reason why Campbell Newman was voted out is because he abused his power and not because he was a Liberal. And I, I certainly do agree with uh, your analysis there, Tim. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.